August 15, 2022, the notice requirements provided for the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied. Notice of this meeting was properly given by the Asbury Park Press, the Independent, and the Two River Times, and by posting at the Middletown Township Municipal Building and filing with the Township January 7, 2022. Committeeman Clark. Here. Committeeman Kratz. Here. Committeeman Sanbrino. Here. Deputy Mayor Heidel. Here. Mayor Perry. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Proclamation recognizing September 2022 as Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month in the Township of Middletown. At this time, I'd like to invite the town's uh, the town's teal volunteer Michelle Collins to the front of the room. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, it's great to see this big crowd. I, I, didn't, I didn't tell you that was we were bringing a big crowd today. <laughs> um, well, good evening, everybody. Uh, and uh, I just want to welcome all of you who have not been uh, to our new municipal building. Welcome uh, to uh, the new town hall, uh, something that a lot of us can be, uh, all of us should be proud of. And uh, for the first time, Michelle, this is our, our first time doing this proclamation in this building, not our first time together up here. Um, but be before I uh, go on, I want to introduce Michelle. And Michelle, I'll give, it, give you the floor to, uh, to talk about turning the uh, town teal. Great. My name is Michelle Collins. Uh, I live in Lincroft. Um, I have been here history or genetic markers um, after a radical hysterectomy and intraperitoneal chemotherapy as well as IV chemotherapy. So I'm countering. I'm still in remission after seven years, which is extremely good. I was diagnosed, I asked my oncologist if I would be here to see my kids off to college at the time. Um, she, she asked me how old they were. I said they were eight and ten. And she said she thought I would, but she wasn't sure if I would have recurrent disease or be in remission. As I said, I'm extremely thankful and grateful to still be in remission, um, which is rare for this type of cancer. Um, it has very high mortality rate. Um, approximately 21,000 women are diagnosed a year with 14,000 deaths. Um, it's usually diagnosed at an older age, um, maybe 50 to 60. I was 39, as I said. Um, if you have a family history of breast cancer or ovarian cancer and you're Family, you should be aware that you might um, carry a mutation, which makes you more susceptible to this cancer. I did mutation, but it's good to know, even if you're a male, you could pass this mutation on to your children. Um, so if you had um, a mother or a father who passed away, well, a mother of breast cancer, um, or ovarian, uh, it's good to know to have genetic testing done for yourself. Um, the symptoms are bloating, early satiety, which is feeling full quickly, um, pelvic and uh, abdominal pain, and, and what was the fourth one? <laughs> oh, pelvic pressure and um, pain. But typically, there aren't a lot of symptoms in the beginning, so you, and there's no screening tests. A lot of people think that a pap smear detects ovarian cancer, but it does not. So you have to be aware of the symptoms, and if you have um, a loved one in your life who starts developing odd symptoms, get it checked out, especially if they last longer than two weeks. Um, it's grateful to now be uh, driving our daughter to college tomorrow, so I made it. <laughs> um, 
the University of Richmond. My second goal is to be here for my son graduating high school, um, and then I'm going to shoot for the stars and hope for uh, grandkids and marriages, and I'll have to be here for that. <laughs> <laughs> Not too soon, though. Um, but anyway, I've been uh, involved in the community since my diagnosis because I want to raise awareness for this disease. Um, we don't receive a lot of funding because it's considered rare, so uh, we do the Turn the Town's Teal campaign where we decorate Lindhoff with teal ribbons. Teal is the color of the um, I volunteer at Sloan Kettering and talk to current patients who are receiving chemotherapy to give hope to them. Um, I also educate future doctors with a program called Survivors Teaching Students where we talk about our stories and try to get the ovarian cancer into their mind frame for when they become doctors and have to deal with patients who present to them with unusual symptoms um, that are vague but um, come, come on new, new first for their patient. They should have keep this in the back of their mind. So I'm really thankful for uh, Middletown for um, recognizing this as September for Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month and letting us decorate and um, doing the proclamation. So I really appreciate it. So very quickly, um, this is, uh, I guess, our fourth year, my, my fourth year doing uh, the, this proclamation. And what uh, I was uh, talking with uh, Raven and Tara, who work in, in our communications office, was one of, one of my favorite parts of this, of, of this specific proclamation is the fact that these ribbons are biodegradable. Now, I'm not telling you that because you should say, oh, green planet stuff, that's great. I'm telling you because someone reached out to the mayor's office two years ago and asked about these ribbons. Uh, and they brought up the ribbon that was located at Hurley's Lane uh, and Newman Springs Road in Lincroft. And right there next to the Acme, there was a ribbon there. And they wrote to me in anger a little bit that these ribbons are just left there. And I said, don't worry, but she asked, what, it, what was it for? And when we had told her what it was for, her neighbor had been suffering from the very issues that, are just, that Michelle had just mentioned. And that woman would go on to go to Memorial Sloan Kettering and be diagnosed early enough where she is still alive to this day. So turning the town teal is so critically important. And I know that this came out of a negative comment that somebody was making, but people are paying attention, people see them, and that's why I'm so incredibly proud to once again designate for September as Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. Michelle, thanks for everything that you're doing, and good luck in college. I'm glad that your mom is still here to be able to All right, well, I, you know, it, it's funny, um, we were talking about this being the first time we designated 
September as Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month in this new building. But I have to tell you, Middletown has been on such a sh victory streak with sports and athletics over the last few months. Give yourselves a round of applause. Please. So it's, it's obviously a, a, a great, an unbelievable accomplishment, and I think there's some professional baseball teams that could certainly utilize your, uh, your, your, uh, your play uh, right about now. Uh, they need you at the trade deadline, some of you. Um, but w one thing that we cannot, be, cannot understate is how proud the township is, and, and I see members of our Board of Education here, our president, Frank Capone, Joan Minuis, Leonore Caminiti, Kate Farley is here, Barry Heffernan is here. I'm looking around, anybody, am I missing anybody? Jackie Tobacco is here. Uh, our superintendent, Mary Ellen Walker, is here. Uh, because you gentlemen have, have demonstrated a commitment and a professionalism to uh, this great game. Uh, the, baseball is my favorite sport, so when I'm able to see Young, young men like you demonstrating the, the right way to play the game and something that is so obviously special and means so much to not only your school, not only to your community, but also to your parents, right? Uh, they've spent a lot of time and, and dedication. There was a time when you could not drive, I just wanna let you know, uh, that they were driving you, shuttling you back and forth to all these practices. Dad's shaking his head right now. He's like, hell yeah, you know. <laughs> but uh, but th this, is, uh, this really is a testament to, to you as individuals as well as you as a team. And I want to congratulate you for not only achieving this title, but also making Middletown proud and making your families proud. So I want to congratulate you. On behalf of the Township Committee, I have uh, uh, certificates for each of you, and it states this before I have a uh, coach come up. Uh, Middletown High School uh, North Baseball Team, uh, the Middletown Township Committee congratulates you on winning the NJSIAA. I still haven't achieved. You guys have won your championship, but I still haven't achieved having them shorting, shortening that acronym, by the way. Group 3 state championship, bringing home this title for the first time in your school's 109 year history. It, it is an absolute grand slam. <laughs> First person. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're so proud of you for setting a great example for future generations of Lions. So congratulations, awesome job, and way to represent not only Middletown High School North, but Middletown as a whole. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Louis Romeo. I'm the assistant varsity baseball coach. Uh, Ryan McCabe could not be here tonight. He's the head coach due to the birth of his child. Um, I'd first like to thank the not town excuse. <laughs> <laughs> to thank the township committee for recognizing uh, us. The players certainly deserve all the attention that they're getting. Uh, I'd like to thank the parents again for their support. Uh, I think I can speak for Coach McCabe uh, when I say that this group was a pleasure to coach. Uh, as good as they are on the field, they're even better people off the field. And you can't always say that about the teams that you coach, but I can say that about this team. So kudos to them. Thank you. All right, so real quickly, uh, again, thank you for being great role models for, for our township. And let's bring this title home again next year, all right? What do you say? All right, Regan, you ready to go? BOE, you want to come up here? BOE. I'll be taking a photo and anyone else wants to come up after. Right. Hello. 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 Members of the Board of Education, move to the sides or the front, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to Frank, actually. <laughs> Here's anybody 
don't forget the parents, and I forget the parents. <laughs> items um, just for the record on the agenda we have a proclamation recognizing August 31st 2022 as overdose awareness day in the township of Middletown we have a proclamation recognizing September 20 uh, 2022 as recovery month in the township of Middletown and a proclamation recognizing September 11th 2022 as Patriot Day and National Day of Service and Remembrance in the township of Middletown next item on our agenda tonight we have the administration of oath of office we have first a resolution 22-205 a resolution authorizing appointment of special law enforcement officers class three and we have a motion to approve motion <coughs> committeeman clark yes committeewoman kratz yes committeeman san marino yes Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to adopt resolution 22-205. At this time, I'd like to invite our special uh, class three officers up for uh, their swearing in. I'd like to invite Chris Algieri, Carl Castell, John Cunningham, Christopher English, Richard Fusella, Fusella, excuse me, Nichelle? Knuckle. Knuckle, sorry. Yeah. Christopher Loeffler. Melvin. And Michael Nordstrom. And uh, William Stroker. All right, well, uh, good evening, everybody, once again. And uh, first of all, Today is uh, an absolutely monumental um, effort and collaboration and partnership. Um, the township of Middletown, uh, in the wake of the tragedy in Uvalde, uh, is taking the steps and is the first municipality in, that, in the wake of that tragedy to hire class three police officers to be stationed in not just some of our schools, but in every single public school in this township. And I need to thank our Board of Education, Frank Capone, Joan Minuiz, Leonor Caminiti, Barry Heffernan, uh, Kate Farley, Jackie Tobacco, for, and, and all the members of the board. Uh, Mary Ellen, Amy, uh, I want to thank you. Um, the, we, we put the, uh, an emergency meeting, uh, my first call, uh, the next day after that tragedy was to Frank Capone. And I said to Frank that four years ago, I had tried and attempted through shared service to place class three police officers in every single one of our schools. And at the time, the, the Board of Education uh, was unwilling to have armed police officers uh, in, in the schools. And that didn't make any sense to me as to why we would place unarmed police, former retired police officers in our schools. But today we right that wrong. We, we correct that error because there are two responsibilities that should be taking place in schools. And that is that teachers should teach and students should learn. And the individuals that we are swearing in tonight and the individuals that we hire to work in our public schools moving forward 
are going to be working each and every day to ensure that teachers can teach and that students can learn. And I am so proud to be able to be here tonight. But that wouldn't be possible, it truly wouldn't, without the dedication and commitment of our police chief, Craig Weber, who deserves a round of applause for everything that he does each and every day. And there are quite a few Middletown police officers here tonight, uh, retired uh, police officers, uh, current police officers, and I want to thank all of you, uh, Bobby, uh, John, everybody that, uh, Charlie, everyone that's here uh, that, that takes time and, and each and every day to just go that extra mile. And there is a reason that Middletown has been named one of the safest places, not just in New Jersey, but in America. And that's because of the steadfast commitment of our police department. And I thank each and every one of them from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of this township committee for everything that they do each and every day. This is truly a, a, a first, and you know that it is how, how big of a deal this is, because I'm very proud that uh, our uh, representatives at not only our state level, but federal level, Congressman Chris Smith is here with us today. Our state senator, Declan O'Scanlan, is here with us today, who I know are working very hard to try and provide additional funding, additional measures, not only at the state level, but at the federal level to ensure that municipalities across the state are able to do what we're doing here tonight. So I want to thank them very much for being here. Again, this is a model not just for municipalities in New Jersey, but it is a model for us across the nation and for us to have here our, our high school North baseball team um, to, to see them here and to know that uh, you know they're, they're just trying to be kids and and that's that's what we're trying to protect um, we're trying to protect those kids and I hope not a single one of these individuals that we're swearing in tonight ever has to ever even has to look at their weapon uh, but knowing that they're there uh, brings peace of mind so without, uh, before we uh, get this uh, swearing in underways, I'm going to introduce our police chief, Craig Weber. Thank you, Mayor Perry. Just like to echo what the mayor said, th this has been a monumental undertaking. It would not have been possible without the cooperation of the Board of Education and the strong commitment from the mayor and the uh, governing body. Uh, my staff has worked tirelessly. It's a very short uh, period of time, two months to attract. Uh, uh, the amount of qualified uh, recruits we've been able to get so far, we're still in the process of hiring additional ones before school opens up. So I'm very happy to say the uh, the team we're putting together here is, without question, an all-star team of distinguished and accomplished police officers, very respected in their fields, and we are incredibly proud and grateful that they be joining our department and protecting our schools and making it a safer place. So, thank you. All right. Ready to go? Sure. Yeah. Please raise your right hands and repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of New Jersey, of New Jersey. And, that and that I will bear true faith and allegiance, and allegiance to, the same, to the same and to the governments established, and to the governments established in the United States, in the United States and, in this state, and in this state under the authority of the people. And I do swear to faithfully, faithfully impartially, impartially, and justly perform. And justly all of, the duties All of the duties of a special law enforcement officer, class three, of a special law enforcement officer, class three, according to the best of my ability. So help you God. Congratulations, gentlemen.
So each of these officers will be attending a school resource officer course at the Monmouth County Police Academy beginning August 22nd and 26th. We'll be doing some in-service training with us and then we'll be assigned to schools on September 7th following Labor Day. Uh, the unit is going to be led by Lieutenant Ernie Vokland uh, and Sergeant Brady Corr. And I also want to thank and recognize uh, residents, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ray Katina, who generously made a donation in the amount of $23,500 to provide both proof best for all of our new officers. So I'd like to thank them. Once again, I want to thank our Chief Craig Weber. I want to th thank the leadership and, and the entire uh, Middletown Board of Education who just a few hours ago passed this uh, resolution, this uh, shared service agreement unanimously. I want to thank them for all of their efforts. The, uh, the entire administration that's working tirelessly to make this uh, possible. Uh, to our uh, newly sworn in Class 3 police officers, thank you for all that you've already done as troopers, as police officers. Thank you for what you're doing in the future. Thank you for giving back and thank you for being part of the fabric of this community. Thank you all very much and congratulations. Thank you. 
have a two minute recess? Ready, Mayor? Okay. Okay. Our next item on tonight's agenda, we have the approval of minutes from July 18, 2022, regular meeting. May we have a motion to approve? Hang on one second. I'm just waiting for everybody to kind of. Uh, all right. Motion to approve uh, minutes from second. the July 18th meeting. Was there a second? I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And I had my microphone on. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> for the record. Committeeman Clark? Yes. Committeewoman Kratz? Yes. Committeeman Sedembrino? Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell? Yes. Mayor Perry? Yes. Motion carries to approve minutes. Our next item on tonight's agenda, we have public hearing on proposed ordinances. Our first ordinance, 2022-3349, a bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $1,750,000 for various capital improvements by and for the Township of Middletown in the County of Monmouth, New Jersey, and authorizing the issuance of $650,750 in bonds or notes of the Township for financing part of the appropriation. Any member of the public wishing to speak on public ordinance number 2022-3349? Seeing no member of the public stepping forward, move to close the public portion and approve. Second. Committeeman Clark. Yes. Committeewoman Kratz. Yes. Committeeman Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to uh, adopt this ordinance on second and final reading. At this time, we have Ordinance 2022-3350, an ordinance amending management salaries for 2022. Any member of the public wishing to speak on public ordinance number 2022-3350? Seeing no member of the public stepping forward, move to close the public portion and approve. Second. Committeeman Clark. Yes. Committeewoman Kratz. Yes. Committeeman Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to pass this ordinance on second and final reading. At this time, we have introduction of proposed ordinance 2022-3351, an ordinance authorizing the vacation of a portion of Beverly Way within the Township of Middletown, Monmouth County, New Jersey. Motion introduced. Second. Committeeman Clark. Yes. Committeewoman Kratz. Yes. Committeeman Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to pass this ordinance on first reading with a public hearing to be held uh, September 6, 2022. At this time, I'd like to ask the Township Committee to adopt a consent agenda, which would include resolutions 22-206 through 22-228, removing 22-214 and 22-222 for a separate vote. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Committeeman Clark. Yes. Committeewoman Kratz. Yes. Committeeman Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to adopt a consent agenda. At this time, we have resolution 22-214. Resolution authorizing an award of contract for professional engineering services for Tyndall Park tennis and basketball court improvements. Motion to approve. Second. Committeeman Clark. Recuse. Committeewoman Kratz. Yes. Committeeman Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to adopt this ordinance with recusal noted. At this time, we have resolution 22-222, a resolution authorizing a chapter 159 additional item of funding in the 2022 budget shared service agreement between the Township of Middletown and Middletown Township Schools, Board of Education, Special Law Enforcement Officers 3, SLEO 3. Motion to approve. Second. Committeeman Clark. Yes. Committeewoman Kratz. Committeeman Sedembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to adopt resolution 
Our next item on tonight's agenda, we have Township Committee acting as the ABC Issuing Authority. We have Resolution 22-229, a resolution authorizing renewal of liquor license with special ruling 1331-44-007. Motion to approve. Second. Committeeman Clark. Yes. Committeewoman Kratz. Yes. Committeeman Senembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to adopt Resolution 22-229. At this time, we have Resolution 22-230, a resolution authorizing person-to-person -person and place-to-place -place transfer of liquor license 1331-44-007. Motion to approve. Second. Committeeman Clark. Yes. Committeewoman Kratz. Yes. Committeeman Senembrino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Highbell. Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to adopt Resolution 22-230. This time we have township committee comments. Committee Clark. Thank you, Mayor. Um, to echo the mayor's, the mayor's words uh, when he was talking to the baseball team, uh, sitting up here gives us a, a great opportunity to see all the awesome things that happen in town. Uh, again, having been born and raised here, I always knew that we were a, a town predicated on being champions. Um, and to build on that, uh, our Board of Ed championed our children uh, over uh, a long period of time to really just set a standard for the right way to do things. And that, guys, I, I just want to commend you all sitting here uh, on an awesome job. Um, our children deserve the best. They deserve to have champions. And uh, the example we set up here and, and that you guys set is, is the trickle-down effect that creates champions across the way. So whether it's a baseball team or the Board of Ed um, or our police department and the, and the team that we brought in, I believe the mayor called them an all-star team, or, or it was the, uh, uh, the police chief. But that's, that's the way our town is, and that's the way we operate. So um, that's all I got for comment tonight. Great job by everybody. Thank you, Committee Man Clark. Committee Man Senebrino. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I was listening to Committee Man Clark's comments, and uh, they were excellent with regard to uh, the, uh, our um, work with the Board of Education and your contribution to the township. So thank you very much. This, um, these types of partnerships between the Township Committee and the Board of Ed, as you know, doesn't happen and it hasn't happened all the time. And uh, we're very grateful for your partnership and for the ability to, um, to produce leaders um, like uh, the um, uh, High School North baseball team. And I won't repeat the uh, initials, Mayor, so uh, you, you did that, so thank you. Yeah. Um, with the, uh, as a 109 year history, uh, that's fantastic. And then, of course, I, I, I felt pretty safe here with the uh, retired police officers. I, and I told uh, Colleen for a few minutes. So I, I, uh, I trust that that safe feeling will uh, be spread to all of our schools. And I uh, thank you very uh, once again for your help with this. Mayor, thank you very much. Thank you. And Committee Woman Kratz. Um, just uh, thankful to Michelle for bringing continued awareness to such an important cause for women and, and it's, it's amazing and, and so pleased to see her determination and her resilience and wonderful to see her daughter in the back of the room. So congratulations to her and congratulations to our Middletown High School North baseball team. So a lot of familiar faces for me in that crowd. So it's really quite special. So thrilled for them. And um, really so very proud proud of our Board of Education for having the commitment and, and the wherewithal to right such egregious wrong that had been attempted years ago and putting our children and their safety at the top, as a top priority. And the mayor said it perfect, you know, let our teachers teach and let our children learn. And I will, I will share that as a mother with a student in, in school, it, it is, a good feeling to have your child come home and say, I'm so happy that, you know, they've made this decision. So I applaud each and every one of you and, and I applaud the effort of this governing body, especially the leadership of our mayor for, for working together and making it happen. So fabulous job. Um, and, and I echo the sentiments also of these officers that we're putting in place in the schools. Their resumes are stellar and we're really so fortunate to have them. So that was really quite wonderful also. So thank you so much again. Thank you, Mayor, Committee Woman Kratz, Deputy Mayor. Well, my colleagues left me with a lot. I feel like I'm coming after the mayor this time. <laughs> so uh, first, I, I got to thank 
uh, Frank personally. Great job putting us through here. I know this was uh, the shortest time, the complete board event. You guys were behind us all the way. Um, once you get Tony going, you can't really stop him. So uh, way to get this through here. Th this list of officers, I mean, I mean, this is the best of the best. I mean, every time we hire a new police officer, I don't know where, where Craig Weber is. I don't know if they're coming here for me or the chief, but uh, th these guys are, they, they were the best. We have one of the guys, I wanted to meet him. I couldn't, uh, John Cunningham, he's got 34 years in the state police. He's got every rank. He's lieutenant. I mean, this is some serious talent we got going over there. So uh, uh, with, the, with the people you have there now, uh, John McGuire, you got some some real talent that I know is going to keep us uh, keep us safe and make everyone feel comfortable. The baseball team, uh, that, that's amazing. Every time we come here, we got a different uh, one of our high schools coming in with different awards, and it just uh, just makes me smile every time I uh, uh, I'm a part of that. And uh, one of the boys, uh, I was at his Eagle Scout ceremony. He uh, was running late that day when he received the rank of Eagle Scout. I didn't catch him again here, but uh, pretty amazing uh, uh, group of uh, boys here. Uh, Mayor, that's, uh, that's all I have. All right. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, <clears throat> obviously, a, a great day for, for Middletown. And once again, thank you to the Board of Ed. We spent a lot of, a lot of time in meetings, but we got it done. I, I was with Nelson about three hours before your meeting. So, you know, for two and a half months is, is good for, for corporate America. Two and a half months is unbelievable uh, for, for, for two government agencies to come together. Um, and, and make that possible. So thank you again. Um, just a few quick things. Uh, I want to congratulate the Middletown PBA, held their annual golf outing uh, last week, and they were raising money. This is not money for them. This is They pick a different charity every year, um, and they donate the money to that charity. Uh, but it was from uh, an organization called Me Is Mission, and it... Uh, was formed by a correctional officer uh, and his wife who lost their two-year-old. Um, and Bobby's here. Bob, I didn't see you in the back. Sorry, Bobby. Um, but uh, the, just uh, you know, an unbelievable job each and every year to pick different charities that, you know, I don't want to say that not a lot of people have heard of them, but they pick charities that really do unbelievable work and are taking in zero at the at the bottom line and they are working to just make a small difference in people's lives and i think those are the charities that are truly um the most impactful um and i'm so happy that we have so many of those very charities here in middletown so great golf outing um, my score definitely wasn't going to bring us into the winning category but i don't believe half of those scores anyway so Neither does Bobby, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but just an unbelievable um, an unbelievable day. So I just want to congratulate the Middletown PBA. Um, I also want to um, give kudos out to Navesink uh, Fire Company. Uh, they held their annual Firemen's Fair uh, over this this past week, and I heard that I wasn't there Thursday night, but I heard that Thursday was the largest crowd that they've ever had in their history. Um, which is uh, absolutely unbelievable. An amazing amount of great sponsors and just folks that are just really, truly appreciate um, what it is that our fire department does uh, on a daily basis. You know, we, we have our tax receipt calculator, and, uh, you know, it always amazes me whenever you plug in your information on there that the average cost for a homeowner for the, fire, the Middletown Fire Department for a household is about is less than thirty dollars, um, and to me that is just uh, incredible for for all the time and effort that they put in to it. You know, I got two chiefs sitting up here, uh, two former chiefs sitting up here, so it it, it is uh, absolutely incredible. Um, and then finally, I just want to give a save the date out for September twenty fourth is rapidly approaching, whether you like it or not. September is coming. Uh, Middletown Day uh, is returning to Croydon Hall September 24th from 11 to 5. Um, so uh, I just want to um, make sure everybody ha holds that date on their calendar. With that being said, I'll close Township Committee comments. At this time, we'll open it up for public comment. Any member of the public wishing to make a public comment, 
John's going to bring the microphone right up front. We just ask that you state your name and address for the record um, and that you keep your comments to five minutes. At four minutes, I'll let you know that you have one minute remaining. With that being said, any member of the public wishing to make a public comment? John, you got that mic. My name is Frederick Johnson. My wife and I have lived at 66 Pape Drive for 10 years in our three bedroom home at Navasink Estates. It is a condominium community built in 1986 of 68 townhomes, 34 two, uh, two bedroom units and 34 three bedroom units. From 2012 to 2021, our taxes increased incrementally from $6,700 to $8,600, averaging 3% per year. Then came our 2002, uh, 2022 tax bill. I respectfully rise before you, Mr. Mayor, and the Township Committee to say something is amiss in Middletown. On July 27th, I spoke with tax assessor Alex Worth to question how our property taxes increased 26% in one year. I also read Mr. Worth's August 10th explanation on patch.com about how the assessment demonstration program, ADP, has been used in Monmouth County since 2013 to assess home values and determine property taxes. I understand that changes cannot be made to our current tax bill as the assessment appeal date expired on January 15. Of course, that was six months before the tax bill was received in July. The appeal deadline is stacked against the homeowner. Not until receiving my tax bill did I know that a 39% increase in assessed value translates to a 26% tax increase, 26% in one year. There is no recourse now but to pay up. That feels unfair and leaves me thinking something is systemically amiss with the assessment demonstration program. As retirees, that something digs deep into our wallet and has an impact on our monthly budget. Last year, the sum of the four quarter payments totaled $8,600. This year, the four quarter payments add up to $12,000. I've rounded the numbers just slightly. The impact on our monthly budget has increased from $716 per month last year to $995 per month this year, 39% more per month, the same as the assessment increase. What can we expect next year and the year after that? Is Middletown trying to force us to sell our home? Many mu municipalities have assessment limits which cap tax increases. Obviously, Middletown does not. Perhaps it should. Something is amiss in Middletown, and I implore you to investigate the assessment demonstration program and encourage Governor Murphy and the state legislature to make the assessment property tax tax system more fair. Please respond to me in writing on or before November 1st, 2022, with the corrective action you will take in this matter. Thank you. Oh, I mean, th thank you very much for your comments. I mean, we, we can discuss it right now if you like. Um, the, the, the premise is that you're against the ADP program, which two counties participate in. It's a pilot program that, as you mentioned, correctly mentioned, was instituted back in 2013. Um, the the township does not have any as as really no dealings with the um, ADP program as it is has been laid out by law. Um, the the issue that you're you're speaking about is the fact that over the last two years we have seen uh, an absolute astonishing increase in home values um, in, in Middletown and across the state of New Jersey, right? Uh, they, they go up, they're going up all over the place. 
Um, and that is what the, it correlates to. Um, in order to have a, a change to that ADP program, that does have to come from the legislature mm -hmm. and, and from the governor. Um, I have not heard that they are looking for changes uh, to it. I, I don't know um, what, what their, their thoughts are on that program. Um, but but this, is, this is a matter for your, your state senator, who, who was here tonight, as well as, um, as well as the members of the assembly and the governor to implement. And you don't have any, you don't make any recommendations on behalf of the township of Middletown as the township committee? Well, re remember that there are people in the same situation that had, that their taxes were reduced given their assessed values, right? So, so it, it's, it's almost like a, you know, like a tide, basically. It, it's, it, as one side gets higher, the other side has to go down for equilibrium, right? But, you, I mean, you're, you're, are you asking for us to be against the ADP program? Well, I, I think it needs to be investigated a little further. You know, it, to me, it's, it, it perhaps is not demonstrating as much fairness as the uh, well, the fairness the that it, the, the fairness indicate. that it was trying to prevent, the fairness that it was the fairness that it was trying to create. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, and what what the old system was failing to do was that there were and 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 there are individuals here who are real estate agents that know exactly what I'm talking about. the The issue at hand was that there were people being taxed at 110 percent of what they should have been taxed at in terms of assessed value. And then there were people who were being taxed at 75% of what they were supposed to be paying, right? So the, the point of the ADP program was to bring everybody's um, assessed values up to 100% of what they should have been, right? And stop preventing um, also the dramatic increases that people saw when they were reassessed. That was the other thing because the town is now equally divided over a period of years to be reassessed. So the idea behind the ADP program was you have places like Jersey City, for example, and you want, you want to talk about a, a, a city that has taken advantage of the, of the uh, system. You're talking about Jersey City, which has million dollar apartments in all these high rises that are getting Abbott school funding because they pilot every single project which shows that they can continue to just pilot all these programs and say well it's not really going to the schools but they're piloting residential which is stealing from the schools ultimately I mean for commercial I understand that but for residential but million dollar apartments that aren't paying a million dollars in, in property taxes, or, or they're not paying that, that accurate assessed value. And that is the reason that programs like this should exist, is to prevent people from taking advantage of the system. Well, I did some calculations. Mm -hmm. our, our condominium development uh, is on t approximately 24 acres of land. And based on the property value assessment for all 68 units, it comes out to, per acre, $675,000 for just one acre. Mm -hmm. I just want to just question, just one second. Thank you for your comments, by yes. the way. Um, your value of your condo is, is roughly $550,000, is that about right? $525,000, Okay. Can, are, are you questioning that value of it being too high? I guess, well, I'm questioning the, the, the idea of the boats rising and sinking. I mm -hmm. feel like our boat is way up there right now. And is that the real estate market seems to have exploded in the last two years. And the tax rate went down, and yet our taxes went so far up. So. What's happening with all of the other homes in let the community? Let me just ask you the value again. 
$525,000. Yes. Would you sell your home for $525,000? I don't want to sell my home. I'm just, but this program, going back to what you were saying before, will give you a, a nice, fair look at it next year again. If this real estate is a bubble that it's increased as high as it has, and it comes back down 10%, your, your valuation will change according mm -hmm. to that. If there, if, if you spoke to Alex Worth, I and, did. and there's, and he, he's very good at this because we do get a lot of phone calls on, on valuations. Mm -hmm. And if this is not what you believe to be the correct value of your home, then you have a, a case. It was based on two, two of the three bedroom units being sold in, in 2021. And in fact, the unit that sold for uh, 525 was is assessed less than my unit is. So, so you have every intention on appealing then? Yes, ne for next year. I'm going to go into the, the Tiara program. I don't know how to pronounce it. There's something that you can do it. Yeah, you can do it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot of research. It was, it was quite um, laborious to do this over the last two weeks, really, since I got the bill. Um, and going through the, the public records, I, it took me forever to even find my tax map which I finally located, and then I was able to... Alex can get you that in about two, stro two strokes of his, of his keypad over okay. there. Alex is there to help you. I've had yeah, he, many residents call, and he is always he, willing to help. Well, him. when I spoke to him, he was very courteous, and he was, yeah. you know, he was, he was a gentleman. And then I... Thirty-nine percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's double. Yeah. Even more difficult to keep up with, particularly if you're on a fixed income. So it's not a perfect system, but it's the fairest of the systems. And there are other counties, by the way. We, we were part of the demonstration program. Mm -hmm. There are several other counties who do it on purpose, voluntarily, because it's the fairest system to use. So it's not great, but it really is the best system. And basing values on comparable sales values is part of the New Jersey Constitution. Mm -hmm. it's, that's the way we have to do it. Okay. And, and we and we have and, and just just before I let you finish, but you know the the, the one thing I want to be clear about is this, this governing body. I mean, every unfunded mandate that we we have that has come down the pipe, we have fought against um, every single one. And uh, you know there was there was a surplus of bonded money that you didn't get a vote on. I didn't get a vote on. No member of this of this board got to vote on. And it, rather than fully funding, which I wrote an op-ed on, the energy tax receipts, which Middletown is due $11 million. Colleen, how much we get this year? Six million? Six million, that's been since 2004, Colleen? 2001. Yeah, 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 2004 at our current level. The, we're owed 11 million, we get six, the amount of money that we have now been shorted is now greater than our municipal operating budget. It's greater. So rather than continually taking money from us, I think the, the, taxes, the, the, the taxes that these utility companies are paying to the state of New Jersey that should be paid to the municipality, stop shorting the municipality, and then be, we are able to offer a, a tax discount, uh, a, a tax reduction, uh, completely. Um, it's just, it's, it's an unfair system, one that, that former Mayor Fiore has screamed from every dais he's ever sat at about this. Uh, I mean, that is, that is absolute robbery to the taxpayer because the, the, the people in Trenton are not driving over the road that the utilities are utilizing to transport electricity and gas and water. 
That is the municipality that's doing that. And we're due that money. And for, for us to now be shorted more than $50 million um, is ridiculous. Uh, so we had an opportunity, the state of New Jersey had an opportunity to create long-term sustainable property tax relief and they decided against it. Well, I appreciate your hearing just, my just comments. One, one last second. Uh, yes. And I'm sorry, I don't have all the information on this, but if you can give your number to Laura, uh, there's, there's an ability for you. You said you both are retired. There's a senior freeze. And yes, I, I looked into, you know, it, it, we don't quite qualify. It, it's the story of the middle class. Yeah, you just, you're you, defined you're by not, whatever Trenton defines you as. Yeah, you, you're not like poor enough to. Yeah, um, you're over the threshold. Yeah. Are you over the threshold for the PTR as well? The PTR. So, the, so you have the homestead rebate, mm -hmm. which, which is that one. That we just can make. So I did call okay. on that, and they said I could call for an application. Good. Yeah. Even if you believe, the one thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you and, and, and provide a piece of advice, even if you are not eligible, mm -hmm. apply anyway. Okay, thank you. Be unfortunately, the legislature during the budget season, which doesn't happen until June, they have to pass the budget by June 30th, mm -hmm. they are the ones that set the income threshold. So when you apply, just apply and be denied. Okay. Um, it's, it's a worthwhile exercise. I've seen multiple times where they go back and forth. It's been 65000 then it goes up to 76000 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, but but if you're not eligible, just apply anyway. Okay, thank you. All right. I'm sorry to sound so negative on such a positive night. <laughs> it's okay. It's a, understandable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other member of the public wishing to make a pub? Are you okay? Come on, come on. I, I, just real quick, before. Hang on one second before before I let you come up, since since you are together, I'm assuming. Any other member of the public wishing to make? Yeah, Melanie, come on down. I'm just going to allow somebody outside of your lovely Navasink Estates home to, uh, to come up. Melanie, what's happening? How are you? Um, good, good. Good evening. Um, I'm sure you know why I'm here. I do. Uh, Melanie Elmger, Green Tree Terrace and Lincroft. Just wondering if there's any updates on the um, appraisals for the land acquisition for the two-way Acme Road in Lincroft. Uh, any advancements there? Turn on this time. Um, yeah, I know Ted, Ted Maloney has sent the um, uh, sketches to the appraiser. Mm -hmm. we, he's scheduling a meeting with him. should be any day now um, okay. to get, a, you know, get together with him and work out the final uh, details. He's going to need to give us a revised um, appraisal uh, value. Mm -hmm. So by the next meeting, we should have that in place. Okay. And we'll be trying to then negotiate with the owner. We were hoping to have it to for right, today, but, right. but we do not have it. Okay, currently. and that would be discussed in executive session for the yes. next township committee meeting? Okay, okay, and um, is there anything we can do as a community about um, the car thefts and the attempted break-ins? Um, Lincroft residents are particularly vulnerable because we sit right between exit 114 and exit 109. It is so quick to get on that parkway once you steal a car, and Homedale has been hit terribly um, this past year, um, you know, you see it on the patch and on the ring and on all these different apps of video. Um, it's scary, you know, because it just it seems like you're locking everything up. And people are still leaving the key fobs in the car, so then, you know, it makes it attractive for them to keep testing all the cars. So I'm wondering if there's anything we can do, any kind of signage or any kind of extra patrols in the, like, 1 to 3 a.m. time, if that's when it's occurring you know, yeah just so looking. so we have assigned so it's so obviously as you know we held the press conference right outside of the police mm -hmm. department a few months mm -hmm. back to raise awareness to it and and right after that it, it got significant media attention and all of a sudden even stopped. even the chief had said <laughs> yeah. you know it, like, it, wow. can we have a press conference every month yeah um but the uh the what I said then, and what I will continue to say, is that the misnomer of bail reform mm -hmm. um, it has has crippled police departments, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion. Um, 
One, uh, these uh, crime rings are taking these cars. They're taking them up right to Port Elizabeth. They're taking them up to Port of Newark. They're put, loading them onto container ships, and they're shipping those down to South America uh, to, to uh, other international destinations um, where the tracking mechanisms don't work in the vehicles anymore. Mm -hmm. So that, that's one big thing. And they are utilizing miners, mm -hmm. which is, is the other problem because they're giving these 14, 15 year olds $1,000 to go and they bring them down, they scout out an area, they figure out what the tendencies are, are of neighbors in and around uh, different blocks. Uh, the one big thing that I encourage, and, and someone just did this to me to the, the other day, uh, was report when you see one of these vehicles that you, you don't think it is, is, you've never seen it before, um, report them. Because the, at the very least, the Middletown Police Department will go out and run the plate of that mm -hmm. vehicle. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, the vehicles that they're utilizing are stolen, stolen. anyway, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So we'll go out, we'll check it, and uh, if, if it turns out, great. But as the old New York City subway adage goes, see something, say something, right? You know. So if you do see one of these vehicles, you know, obviously we do encourage people to take their key fobs out of their vehicles. But at the same time, these individuals are becoming more and more confident. Mm -hmm. They're now breaking into homes, they're breaking into garages, and they're ste stealing vehicles right out of the garages. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it's, it's a scary situation, um, but I do, um, and we'll continue to work with the sheriff, uh, work with the U.S. Attorney's Office, work with the Monmouth County Chiefs Association to raise awareness because I've seen, I've been provided a list by the Monmouth County Sheriff of repeat offenders. Mm. And you're talking about people within 12 to 24 hours after they've been picked up for carjacking, right back out on the street doing the exact same thing mm -hmm. because they know they're not gonna get prosecuted we just saw today news is that the, in the next six months, you are going to see an additional 25% of the judges reach retirement age in the state of New Jersey. It's required by law that they have to retire on their 70th birthday. And that is why there's a backlog. That is why we have the issues, but also bail reform is a massive issue. And when you, you know, New Jersey is not a three strike uh, state, but when you are continually seeing the same exact individuals, you know, it, it, you almost you, you do feel bad for these young people that they're that they're in a situation where basically they're being offered a thousand dollars to go steal a vehicle, and these crime rings are giving it to them, telling them you're going to be in jail for a couple hours and then you're going to be released. I mean, it, it is sad. It's a sad state of affairs, and I think that until we ensure that a system of law and order takes place. If you steal a vehicle, if you break and entering into somebody's home, you should not be back out on the street in six hours. It just shouldn't happen. If, if you make the most egregious crimes, you should not be back out on the street in six hours. That is not the point. The point is not to be a customer service business. It is supposed to protect the integrity of the law and to protect the residents at large, period. I feel more could be said, lock up, lock up, lock up, lock up. You know, it helps everybody. Um, so to keep this on a positive note, keep that theme going, I just want to say one last thing is that um, I've made a couple calls to the township. Um, Amy Citrano, wonderful, lovely, so knowledgeable, um, approachable, explains things, just wonderful to speak to. Um, Doug Grohl with Code Enforcement, very helpful. I was very uh, pleased with working with him. And the guys at the Recycling Center could not be nicer, any nicer, despite the heat. I mean, it's been brutal yeah. being at the train station, that blacktop. It's, you know, in, all through July, it must have been yeah. very difficult, yet they still pop up, help all the residents that come with heavier things. It's, you know, very I, nice I, to I see. I was there over the weekend, mm -hmm. and... You know, for, fortunately, Canes Lane will be opening right around uh, Labor Day. Labor think, Day, right? yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, obviously the new and improved Canes Lane will be much better, much mm -hmm. more, 
more resident friendly. Right. Um, but the, the effort by, and, and Ted, I, I meant to send you an email today, uh, over the weekend, I was there twice, and the, every single car that drove through, those individuals that were working at the train station were popping up, mm -hmm, getting mm -hmm. those, those cars out of there, yeah. moving them along, yeah. and to be able to take that temporary, you know, the, the situation where we're rehabilitating and, and revitalizing our recycling center and be able to recreate it on a micro scale over at the train station, it's really worked out mm -hmm. well, and, and the, the individuals working, uh, everybody really, uh, you know, our, our, our employees really deserve a lot of credit because they're doing a heck of a job over there. So I, I, I agree with you, Melanie, okay. completely. And just as a board, as a whole, the Township Committee, I do appreciate the, the explanation of things because you're educating us on how to do things. You know, especially um, Mr. Mercantante, you always explain the reason. You know, it seems so stupid you know, some things that happen, and then you say, oh, it's this, and oh, okay, that's I always that's try why. and get one over on Tony. It doesn't happen often, but I've written down the four times it has in four years. <laughs> um, but but it, it is a credit to our communications office. It's mm -hmm. a credit to, to yeah. Tony. It's a credit to everybody for, you know, the, our policy has been, let's just get the information out there as quickly right. as possible and as clearly as possible, mm -hmm. and Tara and Raven, and everybody do an amazing job at that. Thank you. Thank Have you, Melanie. Thank you. Any other member of the public wishing to make a public comment? Yes, ma'am. Tara, good job. Yes, behind the curtain. Good evening. My good name evening. Is Jane Riley. I live at 68 Cape Dry. Um... Just take one step forward. We'll, we'll get you a little bit clearer. Yep, now? there you go. You I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm here. I want to make sure that Heibel can hear you. He's a little, you know, he's a little bit older than me. <laughs> I'm here to raise um, concerns and questions regarding the dramatically increased 2020 tax bill I recently received, and question the fairness and uniformity of the algorithm used by the township in setting assessment values so that each property owner is in fact billed for their fair share of the property tax levy. The 2022 assessment for our home uh, on Pave Drive increased um, $160,000 $160, for 2022. We weren't completely surprised by the new assessment as we were aware of sharply rising home prices. Um, and in fact, one comparable home on our block sold for 575,000 in 2021. And so our assessment, though eye-opening, seemed fair enough. We didn't appeal the assessment, assuming, assuming all homes in Middletown were assessed fairly and uniformly to reflect overall sharp market price increases, and assuming that any change in our actual tax wouldn't vary significantly from the average since residential prices had increased across the board. I'm gonna borrow Fred's we thought of the average adage, all boats rise and fall with the tide. Our recently received 2020 uh, tax bill reflected an increase of over $2,200, a 26% rise from last year. My research indicates that the total property tax levy increased about 2.5%, and the average total property tax increase for Middletown town home was about $265, or 2.7%. Our 26% property tax increase was much, much higher than both the 2.5% increase in the tax levy and the average 2.7% increase uh, for the average home. Why then were we hit so hard? I understand that the tax levy is allocated based on property values. Research indicates that the increase in the average assessed value for a Middletown home was about $63,000 in stark contrast to the $160,000 increase in our home's value. During a period when prices in the overall residential real estate market increased significantly. Cape Drive certainly doesn't exist in a vacuum during these times of limited property, inventory, high demand for homes, bidding wars, and desperate potential buyers. The average 13.5% assessment, assessment increase is in stark contrast to the matic, dramatic increases in in real estate market prices overall in 2021, 
regardless to property condition, leading us to question the fairness and uniformity of the ass assessment algorithm. I looked at a random sample of Middletown properties from the county tax database and noted that many of the 22, 2022 assessments for properties that were actually sold in 2021 were well below the actual sale prices. For example, one property sold in August, or in August 2021 for $750,000 and four month, months later was assessed at $629,000. That's an underassessment of $121,000, quite a contrast to the $160,000 $160,000 increase in the assessment of my home, which was likely based on the one sale of a neighbor's home in 2021. Something is amiss. These underassessments for sold properties lead to additional questions regarding assessments of property for which clear market prices don't exist. Were other properties on blocks with 2021 property sales fairly assessed to reflect the skyrocketing overall market as my home was? Were properties on blocks that lacked property sales in 2021 treated fairly to reflect the skyrocketing market? Um, we believe we will pay more than our fair share of the tax levy for 2022. We don't mind paying our fair share, but we do mind subsidizing the tax responsibilities of others. We request that you address apparent flaws in the current uh, assessment algorithm to ensure that each taxpayer pays their fair share of the annual tax levy, no more and no less, the goal of the ADP. We also request that you address the question of unfairness and ensure that it isn't carried into and or exaggerated in future assessments in a financially harmful way to those of us taxpayers who have been uh, financially burdened for tax year 2022. In other words, correct flaws and deficiencies in the assessment method, which impede fairness in the amount of taxes charged to each and every property. Finally, we, we request that you adjust for the apparent lack of fairness being applied uniformly to all properties for 2022 and rectify the resulting unfair financial burdens passed on to some of us taxpayers. Um, and I'd like to mention, I'm gonna send you a copy of, of what I read to you. Um, the example I gave you, I have, and it's just a random sample, there's 50 such properties um, which sold in 2021 that were actually assessed well below um, the actual sale price or the market price. So it just leads to great concerns with what's going on with the system if a clear market value, a true market value, isn't being recognized in the assessment. Well, I, I think, but your your house, uh, see, I, I'm not sure where you were getting your numbers from because it, it seems like your house w went from a 390000 It went from $407,000 to 568000 Okay. Okay, those are the numbers. I, I didn't and, mention and, them because I didn't want to go over my five minutes. That's but that okay. was the increase. And there was one... Um, comparable property uh, on our block that sold, did sell for $575,000, 50,000 over the asking price. Um, so that's why when my husband and I got the assessment, we said, well, one sold, they're telling us it's 568, and we assumed all boats rise with the tide um, because I, I've been researching the real estate market helping a relative and I've noticed Properties have gone up astronomically, as, as you mentioned earlier. And it's, I don't know if certain areas only went up five or 6%. I know that I was assisting a relative looking for properties at the lower end of the market. And properties that were going for 350, you know, had seen like $100,000, $75,000 increases. And I'm, I'm sure you're all aware, aware of this. So, it all happened to us too. I'm sure, but yeah. my concern is that. I'm sorry. You see, um, uh, properties that sold for more than what they're being assessed for, they'll, they, they'll get picked up next year uh, on their sale, at their sales price. But then why did my property? Why did my property you'll, you'll, get you'll, picked up four years um, after the sale of my neighbor's property? You see my concern here? Yes, it'll, it, it may very well be next year. No, what it's I'm this year. Is, no, I'm this not, this year. I, I didn't finish. It's this year. Okay. okay. Um, 
the, as you mentioned, a lot of properties are being bid on, right? And, and so a person asks a, a, a sales price of, you know, $450,000. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, somebody's paying $600,000 because mm -hmm. they want it. One of the things that affected the real estate economy, as everyone knows, is that due to the pandemic, there was a huge flood of people leaving higher density areas of the state or, right. or New York right. coming to lower density. So they were right. paying more than a premium for something. So it's very likely that they paid more than it was assessed for. It happened a lot. Right. That, that, will, get, that will get picked up in the future. But that's why you, you see sales prices that aren't reflected in the, in the appraised uh, value. Okay. So one example is uh, I saw a property that sold in July. 2021. Four months later, and it sold for 670000 Four months later, the assessment came in at uh, five, around 520. It was 160000 under assessment. My neighbor's property sold for 575000 in July, the same month. Four months later, my property was assessed for $160,000 more than my assessment. So it's the same period of time, okay? To 2021, yes. Yes, it is. The, the, the um, property I'm referring to in, in my table, one of many, um, sold for Yes, mine, I'm um, 68 paid prize. Oh, the one that sold is 32. That wasn't mine. That's my neighbor, yes. Values are captured in October 1 of the year. Okay. So if it was 2021, then October 1 of last year is when the values are struck for this year's assessment. I understand so. that, and that's why we didn't appeal the assessment. But I'm seeing properties, and I'll give you this one example from my little table here. Um, give me one second. This property sold on June 16, 2021, for $670,000. In November of 2021, four months later, the same, practically the same period of time, five months later, it was assessed at $507,000 after it sold for six seventy. dollars So, you know, that's very concerning. It's $163,000 under assessment, about the size of the increase. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think that you're, 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 this isn't a tax appeal session here. So, I mean, no, I'm not appealing you, and my every, tax. Every I'm not single, appealing my tax. Yeah, no, every single property, every. You, you, I mean, you just can throw out, I can throw out a thousand different examples. I'm going to send you the, the table, way. and it's right in but, the, the but, county but, tax but, database. You can the, see it. The numbers, what matters are the, are the comps. The only comps that matters are the comps in your neighborhood. And if you look at those comps, and you look, there's properties listed in your neighborhood in the 600,000s right now. So I'm not so, appealing my tax so assessment. I know, I'm just, but, I'm, but I'm just, so it's very important, it, you know, to look at, Comps that and are I do every year. I do so every just, year. I'm just, I'm, just, you know, I'm on top of it. We could talk about, you know, there's 20,000 something line items in Middletown, and there's many different situations that arise. Sometimes a property could have been bank owned, a property could have been an intra family transfer. There's, I looked at that. I didn't see any dozens. special just, notes on these I'm just, 50 properties. So, I so have. What, what is your, we're not going to resolve what, those here. What so, are you requesting then? Uh, I'll send you a copy of the letter. Um, I had three requests. Okay. Um, if you, you you can you can email us if you would like to, the 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 uh, letter, and okay. uh, we'll be happy to have Alex take a look at it and provide answers to Colleen. We can make that ask yeah. Alex, um, and he uh, will be more than happy um, to. Oh, I'm sure he's already on it. I'm sure if he's I, listening. If I may, may I just repeat my request? Go ahead. They were at the end. As I said, we don't mind paying our fair share of the tax level. We do mind subsidizing the tax responsibilities of others. We request that you address apparent flaws in the current assessment algorithm to ensure that each taxpayer pays their fair share. We request that you address the question of unfairness and ensure that it isn't carried into and or exaggerated in future assessments 
in a financially harmful way to those of us taxpayers who have been excessively financial burdened for tax year 2022. In other words, correct flaws and deficiencies in the assessment method which impede fairness in the amount of taxes charged to each and every property. Finally, we request that you adjust for the apparent lack of fairness being applied uniformly to all properties for 2022 and rectify the resulting unfair financial burdens passed on to some of us taxpayers. And I will repeat, I'm not appealing our assessment. I would have done that last year. But others aren't being assessed the way we were, including actual 2021 sales. Okay. 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 All right. So we're, I'm, we're just going to follow up with a letter also. Okay. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jennifer Gregorio. I'm at Tubre Avenue um, in North Middletown, New Jersey. Um, we've been having, um, since the pandemic, major quality of life issues, as you guys, um, or as the police department has referred to it. Um, I know that um, I have met with Mayor Perry, the chief, and the deputy chief on several occasions. Um, the um, paid parking lot was, the parking lot became paid which has been more of an issue for us than a um, benefit to us. And um, most of the residents, or a lot of the residents in my area, do not have garages or driveways, and um, people don't want to pay, so they're parking all over the neighborhood. Um, to add to this, they are um, leaving, um, they are urinating and defecating on people's lawns. They were uh, leaving their garbage, they were breaking bottles and whatnot. Um, I know that there was also, too, some several ordinance put in place, and um, people are coming all hours of the day night. They're drinking on the beach. They're starting bonfires, and all the problems have been. They already have ordinances in place, but there's nobody there to enforce them. Um, we have um, tried dealing with this um, through the police department with police officers and we're getting nowhere. Um, we do feel like maybe possibly paid, um, paid per person to go on the beach, make the parking lot free again, and also giving residential parking to um, the people from Bayside to Port Monmouth Road would help. Okay. Um, we, we you, I mean, you and I have discussed that the, the residential parking the issue that we saw with the with the residential parking was was how are we supposed to en uh, enforce that or not enforce that when somebody has an individual over uh that was the big thing if you're visiting a friend's house four or five blocks away what's stopping the police from writing me a ticket for parking in the in the residential only zone I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that a lot of the local munis municipalities do um, do this because of the problems that arose in Union Beach is one of them. <clears throat> I believe that Kingsburg has that in place for a lot of the um, side streets and stuff. And, um, but, you know, quality of life issues with people desecrating the area. I don't even want to come outside my home. People have knocked on my door to ask me if they can use my electricity or my toilet to blow up their thing. This is not the middle town that I've lived in for 23 years. This is a part of middle town that I've never seen before. And you did stop answering my calls. Um, no matter what pleas I get from the police officers, you know, I, I do get passionate because I have to live there. I have to see these, these people exposing themselves and desecrating. There are cones all over the neighborhood. There are people putting no trespassing signs and caution tape up. No one should have to live like that. I mean, talking about taxes, I pay almost $12,000 a year in taxes in North Middletown. And I just want help. Even the deputy chief has noticed that people are leaving garbage on his end now. And he's not even really near the beach. No one listens to the one-way traffic either 
That sign doesn't do nothing. They actually put in the no U-turn, nothing. There's no enforcement. There's no enforcement. So we are left to deal with it, be frustrated, be angry and upset. And now, because I can't get any answers, now I had to, now I'm a, a, a District 7 representative to try to do something and organize our town. So I'm just asking for help. Uh, I know that we can have a further conversation with the chief. Uh, he's here and uh, happy to have those conversations, uh, productive conversations with, with the chief, if you'd like. If they're productive, but they haven't been. Also, to our, the, um, in response to this, this year alone, the township has pulled away maintenance crews to two hours a day and only two hours twice a day on the weekends. Um, that's, that's not helping. Um, they're not giving out tickets. Um, there's also, too, um, I didn't even mention, you know, people drinking and fighting and arguing with people. It, it, it's, it's a war zone down there. And um, you don't, when you do call, it's out of control by that point in time. I'll be happy to talk to the, the, the chief, but I will be, you know, still working with my town to try to come to some type of, of um, real resolution. Because there's no quality of your life. There's no quality of life down there. When, from summer, from the beginning of summer until it's too cold to go on the beach, um, the fires on the beach are, are still happening. There was a fire last year that did, went to the dune because it's windy. You know, you want to be closer to the dune to stop the wind, and you you're starting fires. You know, it's just it's just it's terrible. And I get we're north of Middletown, but we still are taxpaying residents, and we should be treated with respect. Well, I, since I spent the summer of 2020 with with you and the chief and everybody else on there, I think that there, uh, the 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 notion that anyone was ignored is is uh, is not accurate at all. So, um, you know, uh, the, it's it's that's my opinion on that. But uh, but I'm happy to to set up a meeting with the chief and uh, and whomever he de deems appropriate. I'll be happy to I'll be happy to meet with the events there have been plenty it, it depends on who's on duty, it depends on who's writing the tickets, but um, uh, it's not it's not consistent and um, it, it's still a huge problem. And um, you know, I mean for a time frame. All right, just, hang, hang, just hang, on. Out. hang on a second. I can't have two people talking at the same time for, for the record's sake. So if we if Chief, if you can set up a meeting with Mrs. Gregoria, please and uh, and address these concerns if you can i just can't have the i can't have the chief and and you speaking at the same time into the microphone which is right above us all right any other member of the public wishing to make a public comment okay seeing no other member of the public stepping forward move to close the public portion and adjourn second yes 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 mayor highbell Yes. Mayor Perry. Yes. Motion carries to adjourn.